Hello everyone, we will discuss the problem uh, minimum operations to make integer 0 and the reason I am covering it is because it's a B level problem but it has uh, relatively lesser solves. So the problem is simple, you are given uh, an integer num1 and an integer num2 and you want to make num1 equal to 0. In each iteration you can subtract num1 with this value 2 to the power i plus num2. So uh, suppose you do some uh, k operations then the value of num1 will be num1 minus uh, k times num2 minus uh, each iteration you will have some power of uh, 2 being subtracted something like this. So after k operations this will be your number and you want to tell what's the minimum k such that uh, this number is equal to 0 like you are able to convert num1 to 0 eventually. So before, um, all right, all right. So what I did is, um, let's iterate over all possible answers. So that is, the operations, the number of operations can be zero, they can be one, they can be two, they can be like up till some very large number that's infinity. So for each Whenever we are, suppose we are uh, checking, we will have a function which will check whether it is possible to convert num1 to 0 in just uh, two operations. If it returns true, then we will return 2, otherwise we will uh, check for the for three operations, else we will check for four operations and so on. So we will check for all operations from 0 to some very large number infinity and we will have a function which will tell us that uh, suppose we are checking for some x whether it is possible to convert num1 to 0 in x operations all right so when we are checking for some x our num1 will look something like this so that is we are performing the operation x number of times so the new value of num1 will be num1 minus x time num2 minus in each uh, operation we are subtracting a power of 2 as well so something like this and we want to check can this be equal to 0 so in this equation you can see that this value is fixed because uh, num1 is known num2 is known and you are iterating over x all that is left is you need to check whether it is possible let's call this as a difference okay so and this equation can be re rewritten as difference is equal to 2 to the power i1 plus all the weighted 2 to the power ix. So the question actually boils down to checking whether it is possible to represent a number as x powers of 2. Okay. And now this is what you have to solve. You are given some number difference and you want to tell whether it can be represented can be represented as summation of x powers of 2. Now how will you do it? Suppose your difference looks something like this. Alright. That is it looks something it is equal to this value 2 to the power 5 plus 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 2. So I have represented the difference in binary form. It is obvious that uh, can you tell me the minimum value of x so for this difference what are the minimum power of 2's minimum number of powers of 2's uh, you know that can be summed to form this number okay so that means what's the minimum powers of twos that you will need to add to keep our something plus to keep our something plus to keep our something what's the minimum powers of two that you will need to add to get to this number and uh, well the answer for that is three why because three are the number of set bits in this uh, number so and it is it is i think quite obvious why you cannot have lesser power than three because like lesser if you have uh, sub, since this has three set bits you would you would at least need 
three different powers of two, which will be in this case two to the power five, two to the power three, and two to the power two, to represent this difference. You cannot represent it as in some smaller sums. Like you cannot represent it as two to the power four plus two to the power two to the power five plus two to the power four, or anything lesser than three powers is what you need at least because that's the number of set bits. Now that means for for this number we can represent it in you know uh, uh, three uh, powers of two can we represent it in four powers of two well we can and the way you do it is you look at the previous configuration and uh, you take the minimum of that and you divide that by two so basically if you have something like this then you will be able to uh, represent you are able to represent this number difference because we want to eventually check whether difference can be represented as 2 to the power x uh, in, in like x uh, some x powers of 2 so we are basically checking that uh, we are basically finding the ranges uh, the range of uh, uh, number of powers uh, which can represent this number and that like, x should x should lie in that in this range so the minimum value of uh, this range will be 3 uh, like whatever the number of set bits in diff are so if x is less than the number of set bits in this difference then it's not possible to represent it as x powers of 2 okay so now coming on back to this test case so for x equals to 4 also this number can be represented can it be represented as 5 powers of 2? So you do the same logic. You pick the smallest number, you divide that in half. That will be 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 0. And, and the next time you will divide this into uh, 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 0. Then you will have for x equals to 6 also you can um, represent this number. So if you keep going on and on, you can actually represent this number in at most if this number is equal to difference right let's call this difference uh, so you can represent it in at most this many powers of 2 and that would be the case when you have all the all the powers of 2 as zeros different number this number of times okay so basically if this x we are checking for some x if this x lies in the range of set bits in difference comma difference if it lies in this range then you can uh, you can just return through like this will be a valid number of operations and uh, since we are returning as soon as we find a valid x we are returning the minimum valid x all right so uh, one thing that i have not discussed yet is why uh, so it's obvious like this this checking function i hope it is clear um, where it is where it is yeah so we are iterating over all possible answers and we are finding this difference value and then uh, we are checking uh, that the operation that we are currently at should lie in this range if yes then we will return the answer and since we are returning it the first time th that we find an answer it's obvious that the answer will be minimum now uh, the range of x is now a tricky part like what num how many what can be the maximum answer because we are basically we are checking for all possible values of x and it might be possible that you know the answer might also not exist x might be equal to minus 1 the answer might be equal to minus 1 so what should be this range i have written it here in infinity but infinity will give a dearly so the uh, the thing that else uh, that i'm trying to explain is that the number of operations is the like the answer the number of operations if it exists if answer exists it will not be greater than 100 like it's a safe limit 
I have seen solutions which pass with even uh, lesser limits like 61 I think I saw someone but uh, we can take a safe limit that the answer if it exists it will not exceed 100 okay and let's try to understand the reason behind this okay the condition for answer to ex exist is that x should be less than equal to the number of set bits in difference and difference right and difference is what difference is nums1 minus x times nums2 suppose x is some very large value x is suppose let's say 65 all right then at x equals to 65 if you take this value num1 minus x times num2 the number of set bits will be in that difference will be less than 65 because you know 1 e to the power 18 has around 63 uh, bits i think so x when x is 65 it will definitely be greater than this part so this equality will hold but this equality might not hold so <clears throat> Let's say that for some large x like x65, x is greater than the set diffs, which will uh, set bits and difference, which is obvious because uh, the difference won't be even this large. It would be less than if you try to look at this value, it, it won't be even 1e to the power 14. It will be less than that as well. So the number of set bits will definitely be less than 63 or 65. But uh, since I'm saying that the answer doesn't exist, that means that the difference must also be less than x. Now, if the answer doesn't exist for x equals to 65, and let's assume that nums2 is positive, okay? So when I try to search for some higher answer, suppose x equals to 66, what will happen is the this equality will still hold for the same reasons but this difference right this difference will decrease because difference is nums1 minus x times nums2 and x is positive and this is i'm also assuming to be positive so if i'm and uh, so if i like increase it the um, if I increase it, the difference will decrease and this equality will still hold. So, like difference will reduce even further. Alright. And uh, so that's why if the answer doesn't exist for, let's say, some x equals to 65, it won't even exist for anything after that. So, uh, this has given us some stronger evidence that the answer will lie in the range from 0 to 63 or 64, something like this. But I have taken 100 for, you know, safe. Uh, to be on a safer side and suppose now that num2 is negative if that is the case then uh, we have something like nums1 minus x times num2 since this value is negative uh, that means that it is effectively this value is is uh, like this is suppose minus one right so this means that minus and minus they will become positive so actually nums one is increasing every after every step so if we look at this equality and for some large x like 64 or 65 this equality will still hold but uh, the difference right the difference cannot be like the difference cannot be less than x because the difference is always increasing by 1 so after 64 or 65 operations the difference will definitely be greater than equal to 64 or 65 right so um, also here i think it will be equal not um, less than equal so that's why it's not possible for the difference to be less than x so for negative cases this equality will again definitely hold for some um, large value of x that's why the answer won't be very large the number of operations won't, won't be very large and for every time you want to check for a no number of operation you just find the difference and look at the range and based on that you can tell the answer 
this is what I have done. I have taken the difference. I have if the difference is negative, then um, we just return minus one, uh, and that means that like the difference will even decrease going on forward. It's fine. You don't really need to do this, but just make sure that the difference is not negative because then the number of set bits counting will be uh, wrong. Then I just count the number of set bits in difference, and uh, this you can ignore. I, I did this in con context, but you don't really need to do this. You just need to check that the L or the operations that we are checking lies in the range of set bits and the difference itself. Uh, if it does, then you can return it. Otherwise, you return minus one. So that's how you solve the problem. Thank you for watching the video. Bye bye.